Welcome to Electron Line and the one graph that we haven't touched upon yet is what we call the spiral. It's a very unique graph for polar coordinates and so here we have the equation where r equals 3 theta. So as theta gets bigger, as the angle gets bigger, r gets bigger as well and because of that we'll get a uh, like kind of like spiral that goes out farther and farther and farther because the, the larger the angle, the larger the distance from the origin to the point of interest. So let's say that we have a table right here of values. Let's say that theta is equal to pi over 4. That means 3 pi, 3 theta is 3 pi over 4, and then the length of that would be 3 quarters of a pi. So at theta equals 0, which we didn't include, might as well. So if theta equals 0, 3 theta equals 0, and of course that's equal to r. So at 0, we're at the origin right here. But when we make an angle of 45 degrees, notice then at 45 degrees at pi over 4, the length of r is 3 pi over 4, so then we're about right over there. Now at 90 degrees, or theta over 2, or pi over 2, r is 3 pi over 2, or 1 and a half pi, so that puts us right about there. So you can see that the spiral comes out like this, slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and at this point, at an angle of 90 degrees, or pi over 2, r is now already 3 pi over 2 in length. Continuing, when the angle is equal to pi, so of course, when we come all the way around like this, pi, then theta, 3 theta will be 3 pi, and of course, since r is 3 theta, that means r will be this long like that. So continuing with the spiral, it will go out like that. Okay, continue on some more. At 2 pi, it will be equal, so when theta is equal to 2 pi, 3 theta, which is r, will be equal to 6 pi, which is way over here right there. So you can see that at, well... We'll put one value in between. What if we have uh, 3 pi over 2? That's 1 and a half pi multiplied times 3. That would be 9 pi over 2, which is equal to 4.5 pi, which means at an angle of 270 degrees, r would be equal to this point right there. So we'll continue onward. You can see that the spiral will just continue to increase like this. Uh, I got a little bit too far right here. And then finally, if we then go over to 2 pi, 3 times 2 pi is 6 pi, so when the angle is 2 pi, then you can see that r will be equal to 6 pi. So you can see that the spiral just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger as we go around, and that's a very peculiar graph for uh, polar coordinates. In this case, when we have r, the radius, equal to a number times the angle theta. And so, if this is a very small number, of course, then the spiral will increase very slowly like this, but if, our, if this is a very big number, then the spiral will go out or outward very quickly. So maybe just to uh, illustrate that, let's try a different equation. Let's try r is equal to 0 0.5 times theta. So let's go ahead and put another column on here. So let's say that um, this is 0 0.5 times theta. So when theta is pi over 4, then the length, then the radius would be pi over 8. At pi over 2, that would be pi over 4. At pi, that would be pi divided by 2. At 2 pi, that would be pi. 3 pi would be 1.5 pi, and so forth. So if I have, for example, uh, 4 pi, which would be 2 circles, 2 complete circles, then we know the radius would be 2 pi. If we have 3 pi, uh, not, not 3 pi, but 6 pi for 3 complete circles, 6 pi, half of that would be 3 pi, and now I think we have enough pairs of numbers there that we can come up with a different graph for this right here. All right, let's try that. So when we have pi over 4, the length is pi over 8, so that would be a very small length like that, pi over 8. When we have pi over 2, then at that point we have pi over 4, so you can see that the spiral starts out very slowly. When we have 180 degrees or pi, that would be pi divided by 2, so now we're over here. At 2 pi, when we go once the circle around, we have 2 pi would equal 2 pi, so this comes around like this, not quite pi, all right? At 3 pi, we have 1 and a half pi, so now we have 1 and a half circles. Now we get to the point of 1 and a half pi, so it would be right over here somewhere. At 4 pi, r would be 2 pi, so continue on like this. And at 6 pi, it would be equal to 3 pi, so we do one more complete circle. You can see that like that, and it would just continue to go outward and outward and outward. So the number here, the constant in front of the angle theta, will determine how many spirals you're going to have as you go around as the 
function simply slowly expands. So R gets bigger and bigger, bigger, proportional to the angle and proportional, of course, to the constant that we have there. So two, two, ni two nice examples to show you what a spiral function looks like in polar coordinates.